my thought today was I wanted to talk about, you know, when I was a little girl, I was going to talk about the telephone of all things. Oh my gosh, there's telephones. Do you even know what a telephone is? You know what an iPhone is? Well, we used to have telephones when I was a little girl and my telephone, some families might even still have them and I don't have one with me in my apartment, but my telephone would, you know, you pick it up and then, then on top of that, you used to have to take your finger and you'd have to dial. It was a little round thing on the telephone and you'd have to dial it and it'd have all the numbers and that you'd call your friends up and you'd have to dial their numbers and then you say, hello, how you doing? Well, that's weird, isn't it? Things have changed a lot. Then it went to the, um, you still had the phone with the cord, but then you would um, put the numbers in. Boop, 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 boop. Boop, 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 you get to push the numbers. Well, I thought that was so cool when I was getting a little older. I'm like, oh my gosh, that is so cool. Anyway, then they went to flip phones. Now, how many of you seen those? Some people still have them in their homes to flip phones. But the funny thing is, is you could never see the person on the other line. Now, the reason why I'm talking about this, because I was thinking about how when I was a little girl, I really wanted to learn to talk to God. And I thought, how do I talk to God? And I wanted to be able to, I wished I could just pick up the phone and say, hey God, how you doing? How's it going today? I, I miss you. What's up there? You know, but you know what a phone, you can't see the other person on the other line. You can hear their voice but you can't see them. Now, iPhones, you can, you can do FaceTime now. It's amazing the things that they um, can do now. <clears throat> but I wanna be able to reach God. And I'm sure as young part people, that's what you want, to be able to reach God. I want to be able to reach God with my words. And I pick up the phone and I call my grandchildren. I pick up the phone and I call my children, children. I pick up the phone, I call my friends. I pick up the phone and I, or my iPhone, I should say, not my regular phone, what used to be my regular phone. I used to do all of those things. But I wanna be able to talk to God just as much, even though I can't see him. Now, sometimes we feel very lonely, and now we've been shut in on our homes sometimes. We've been, um, how are our friends doing? And luckily, iPhones now, you can do FaceTime, and we've even done FaceTime for church. And I'll try to keep the phone real still. But to be able to talk to God is the most important thing ever. When I was a little girl, that's all I wanted to do was be able to talk to God. Oh, I said my prayers, but I wanted to know God. I wanted to be able to pick up the phone and just say, hi, God, it's me, Judy. That's my name, Judy. It's me. How you doing, God? And I'd want him to be able to talk back to me. I'd want him to be able to see how I was doing and know that I was okay and know that he was always there for me. I just, that's all I ever wanted when I was little. And I'm sure with you guys being shut up in your homes, it's been rough sometimes not being able to see all your friends. Now I know school is back, which is really good. And I'm really happy about that. And I hope you guys are doing wonderful in school. I think about you all the time. And I pray for you all the time. But did you know that God prays for us too? God worries about us. God wants to make sure that we're okay. God wants to make sure that you're healthy. God wants to make sure that if you're sick, that he can, that he'll heal you. And, and the most important thing is, I remember when I was a kid, I would want to pick up the phone and tell my friends that I'd been sick all day. Ugh. Anyway, but knowing that I can talk to God, knowing that Jesus hears my prayers, knowing that Jesus is always there for me, I just love that being able to. And I was thinking how, how can I tell you guys how much God loves you? Well, 
It's like picking up a phone and talking to God. He is my greatest friend. And he wants to, he is, he doesn't want to be, he is and will be your greatest friend if you let him. That's right, you just have to let him. You just have to let him in and know that he loves you. And all you have to do, you don't have to pick up the phone. All you have to do is say your words. Just say, Jesus, I'm here. Jesus, I love you today. Jesus, show me you're real. Jesus, show me how much you love me. All you have to do is look around. You've got a great home. You've got a beautiful family. You have food on your table. You have clothes on your back. God loves you. And it's not necessary to pick up a phone and call Jesus. All you have to do is say, hi, it's me, God. I love you, Jesus. Now, there's a lot of technology out there. It scares me, I, I, probably because I'm getting older and I'm not used to all the technology. It's taken me a while to learn how Facebook's, Facebook Live works and how to do Zoom meetings and all those other things. And I'm so grateful that we have those opportunities that we can do that. But you know what? I have a direct line. Now that was the funny thing about an old phone is it actually had a line where it talks. You don't even have to have a line in your phone or a cord on your phone anymore. It just, you just pick it up and walk around and you can take it anywhere and go anywhere and you can be in your car and talk to people and you don't just talk to people that are down the street. You talk to, you can talk to people across the oceans. My goodness, I have a direct line to Jesus though. And I don't have to have a cord holding a direct line. All I have to do is pray. All I have to do is, is talk. You know what? It's not even necessarily about the prayer. It's just believing and have faith that what you ask God, he will do. It's believing and asking Jesus what, you will, what he will do. What will you do for me, Jesus? What can I do to show my love for you, Jesus? I love you. Now, talking about a phone was probably a silly thing. But there's a song out there, and I'm not going to sing the whole thing, but it's it. we used to sing it in church and just call me up, call him up, tell him what you want. Call him up, call him up, tell him what you want. See, all you have to do is Call him out. It's not on a phone that you call him. <laughs> but it's from here to there. Just call him on his name. I love you today. I've missed you guys. I cannot wait to get back to Sunday school and back to church to see everyone again. And you guys, you've never been forgotten. I love you all. We're going to see each other really soon. And I call to Jesus every day and think about you and ask God to help you and know that all you have to do is call up Jesus from here to let him know that you're there. He is there to let him know that you're, that you're thinking of him. I love you this today. You have a wonderful day and know that God loves you. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. So we are here to show you a fun snow craft because we have snow, which is so exciting. I love snow. And yes, supposedly, uh huh. There's more snow coming this weekend. I know, Ooh. I know. So we I, needed to show you something. Yes. That even if it's only an inch, I mean, I'm hoping a good foot or so, but even if it's just one inch. It's something that you can do in your backyard with your parents' permission. Correct. Always. Yes. So this is our outdoor adventure arts and crafts. So today yes. we are going to show you how to do some snow painting. So this is super simple. Super simple. I like that phrase, but it's hard for me to say. Super simple. Say it three times fast. Um, so all that we have here is we have some squirt bottles. These are left over from a tie-dye kit, but you can even if your parents have them use old ketchup bottles 
really anything that just has a little tiny hole at the top. And we also have a spray bottle. We're gonna see what this looks Ooh, like. Ooh, okay. And then we okay. just have some food coloring. So each of these bottles has just water in them. Okay. So what we're going to do is we are going to open them and you wanna hold that for mm -hmm. me? We're just gonna put in as many drops as we want. Okay. So we're just gonna get it to the color that we want. So let's start off with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Whoa. I like bright things. So. Do you want me to give the yep, so we're gonna a little bit? Put the top on, we're gonna shake it, and then we'll see if we like that color. I think that's a good color. I think it's a solid color. All right, let's move on. I love orange. Orange, I feel like orange doesn't get enough attention in life. I think orange demands attention. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there you Ooh, go. What color are we doing in we're this one? Do pink. Pink. Let's do a nice bright pink. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, that's the same amount. Let's see. We'll see if we, if we like this pink color. All right, let's see. See what it looks like because you know what we can put it on the snow if we don't like it we can always just add more color so this one i know it has a blue top but we're going to do purple i did not have a purple top abby i know it doesn't really matter if your you're, tops match you're slacking all right one two three four we're going to try four because purple is a very bright a dark color so we don't want it to be potent. too dark it's a potent color. it is potent so like that's only four drops and that's pretty dark i probably didn't even need that many okay what's our last color well, actually, we have two more colors oh, because okay. we have the spray right, bottle. Right, right, right. So we're going to do green in here. Okay, green is my favorite color. Just saying. One, two, three, that's probably, four. Yeah, yeah, we'll see if that's because green is also potent. I don't really want a dark green. No, this is a good green. I think that's a good green. It's a solid green. And last, oops, not least. But not least. These remind me of little gnomes. I don't know. It's just like these little facts. <laughs> okay, so we are going to do, since our spray bottle is blue, we're going to put blue in it. We're not really going to be able to tell what color it is, but yeah. It's all good. Again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have more water in this one, so we're gonna add a little more. Plus, we want a vibrant blue. All right. All right. All right. And now we just start drawing. So we uncap it. Okay. I'm gonna see if I can write F G I C kids upside down. Well, it wouldn't be upside down for them. It's upside down for me. So it kind of melts the snow. That's cool. Ooh, I lost my cap. I think I'm taking up too much room with FGIC. Yeah, you are. And just be aware this will be stain your fingers a little bit and it may take a day or two to come off. the true test let's see what this spray bottle is like are you ready let's try it over here oh okay do you see it like oh. that's kind of cool it kind of barely covers it just kind of tints the snow a little bit it makes the snow look like all right let's put a little what do you think we should put a little more color in it yeah but it looks like okay. ice melt that's what it reminds it me of. does like a snow cone oh it reminds me of a snow cone oh yeah which i don't actually like but you know if you like snow cones i don't, do don't make them with food coloring i like snow cones okay so we made this a little bit darker. Let's make them see. with food coloring. Oh, it wouldn't taste very good. It just tastes like snow. All right, I think that might be a little bit darker. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's pretty cool. It right now it reminds me of cotton candy. Enjoy the snow. Bye.
off a dinosaur with fireworks. Hmm, let's think here. I know, Dino Mike! <laughs> okay, I thought it was funny. Hopefully all of you little ones think it's funny too. All right, here's another one. What do you call an old snowman? Can you think? What is an old snowman called? How about water? <laughs> okay, 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 okay. I have one more. Why do bicycles fall over? Hmm. Because they're too tired. Really? Hey everyone. I was thinking, why not do some ultimate winter trivia questions? I love trivia. I know you do. So let's see if you know these ultimate winter trivia question Hopefully. answers. Hopefully I do. Hopefully you do too. What are the official months of winter? What are the official, I'll, I'll tell you how many. Three months okay. of winter. December, January, and February. Correct. <laughs> how many sides do snowflakes usually have? Eight? Six. Yep. But you said eight yes. first. <laughs> no, 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 that doesn't work. count. No, you don't get like a second chance. Come on. No. What is the shortest day of the year called? Winter solstice. Correct. <laughs> okay. So they have something called a, they have a specific phobia for extreme fear of the snow. How could you be afraid of the I'm, snow? I don't know. I love snow. Do you want me to give you the four options? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I'm going to attempt to pronounce these. Okay. They have chinophobia mm -hmm. or chinophobia. Mm -hmm. That's the same one. Chino or chino, okay. Yeah. Hydrophobia. Okay. Nephophobia. Okay. And teromerhanophobia. Ter teromerhanophobia. Terom okay, I would just like to give a disclaimer. If I get this wrong, it's probably because of the way you pronounced it. Disclaimer, it is actually pronounced kyanophobia. So... <laughs> Um, okay, well, hydrophobia, I'm thinking, is probably water. So what are the other two? I don't think it's the first one. Chinophobia? Yeah. Hydrophobia? Uh -huh. Nephophobia? Mm -hmm. And teromoheranophobia? I'm going to go with the last one. Okay, it's chinophobia. Really? Yes. Disclaimer, my multiple choice options were mispronounced, and that is the only reason that I got this question Stop wrong. Stop it. I'm not putting that in the video. <laughs> what is the coldest recorded temperature in the USA? I'll give you the options. I'll give you the options. Okay. All right. All right. Negative 42.2 degrees, negative 52.2 degrees, negative 62.2 degrees, and negative... I was about to say negative one, but obviously that you would know it. Negative 72.2 degrees. So 50, 42, 52, 62, or 72. Negative. Okay, well, since Alaska is part of America. Good call. Good um, call. I'm going to go with negative. Sixty-two. But I think it's 52, but I'm going to go with 62. What's your final answer? 60. 62. No. 52? Yep. Uh, <laughs> so that's another half. So those are my two, no. my two makeup. We don't, we don't like, do those half point <laughs> things. We're not about that. Okay. The first Olympic winter games were held in which country? Canada, France, Russia, or USA? I'm going to say Canada. Is that your final answer? Yeah. No. Wow, I'm doing really badly. France. Okay. I wouldn't have guessed that either. So this is I my, would have guessed Russia. This is my ice skating story. <laughs> we um 
used to have this like TV tray thing that was almost, we treated it like a whiteboard. Mm -hmm. And so we would wear our socks and we would like skate in the kitchen and somebody would write down scores and then hold it up. So me and my sisters would do, we would have ice skating competitions and my friend and um, on the kitchen floor in our socks. Oh, um, mine's more embarrassing. Do you want to hear my ice skating story? Definitely, if it's more embarrassing, okay. yes. So I don't remember how old I was. And I got for Christmas ice skating lessons. Mm -hmm. Because I really wanted to be, I really wanted to be an ice skater. Really wanted to be. Okay. But I was old enough to be able to, I was too old. I was too old. Um, you are never too old. Well, for your well, let me let me let me explain. Then okay. you understand. Okay. I went to take this class, and I was probably what felt like five or six years older mm -hmm. than everybody else in my class. Yeah. And I remember we got like these booklets, and um, like of like our accomplishments. And I just at that, I was old enough to say, "I'm too old for this class." <laughs> How? Chat. Tall was the world's largest snowman. Okay, I'll give you some options. Okay, good, thank you. <laughs> okay, all of these are feet, and then they also all have seven inches added to them. So I'm not going to read that every time. So, like, for example, the first one's 93 feet and seven inches. Okay. Everyone all has. Right, all right, all okay. right, all right. So there's 93 feet, uh -huh. 103 feet, mm -hmm. 113 feet, mm -hmm. or 123 feet. How tall was the world's largest C. snowman? 113 feet? Yeah. Is that your final answer? Yes. Even though it's I... correct. Ah! What about go with C? She that one okay, I've gotten a few, right? And by a few, maybe one. What is a Chinook? C H I N. Okay, I have heard this word o -O before. O O K. This is O O K. <laughs> um, what is a Chinook? Is it a, a blizzard, B, a helicopter, C, a type of winter wind, or D, a polar bear? C, a type of winter wind. It is. And that's why I can give a disclaimer because wind is my favorite weather. But if I had said that. Yeah, I would just like to point out how well you match with um, our pillow and our blanket. I coordinated that intentionally. Yeah. You're just trying to blend in. <laughs> when I wear this Where's outfit, Lauren? when I wear this outfit, I feel like I'm a representation for McDonald's. Like I feel like it's ketchup, and ketchup mustard. and mustard. And that, my friends, is it. Bye.